Well, first question I have for you, and I'm curious to know, when you guys, you know, when season two started, did you guys feel any extra pressure living up to the hype that you guys received from season one? Because I think the great thing about season one is it started off with word of mouth from the fans, and then it just grew from there. Did you guys feel yeah. any added pressure going into season two? I definitely did, because I was like, oh, man, we can't disappoint these folks who who really kind of helped build this world for us too i mean the the fandom around the show was really incredible i don't think any of us were prepared for it or expecting it and to just watch these like reddit threads and facebook threads just grow and swell to this whole community of people who are obsessed with the show was really exciting so yeah of course we didn't want to let anyone down and i don't think we did uh <laughs> i'm pretty pretty proud of season two but uh, yeah, there's definitely there's definitely some some pressure for sure that we all put on ourselves because we wanted to deliver. It's interesting. I talked to some fans who you know loved the first season, and then some people think the second season's kind of slow. Uh, I guess that's the word they've been using. There's not a lot of action as compared to season one. And I've been trying mm -hmm. to tell people that they're trying to build these characters, get some more background on these characters in season two. Would you agree with something like that? I wonder if these are the same people that have like who personally hate Christy's haircut as well. So <laughs> I uh, I wonder if they're the same people. Uh, I, I I actually think the pacing of the show is way more dynamic than the first season. I think I feel really engaged with it all. I feel really connected to all of the characters. They're definitely fleshing everybody out more. So I think as an audience, you feel more attached to them. And yeah, I think it's also a game of patience. If you got all the answers off the top, like you'd be, you you wouldn't have a show to watch. You know what I mean? So I think it's it's a game of patience. It's a game of investment, and I think there'll be a really really rewarding payoff if everyone sticks around. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's I think I personally think it's a way faster paced season. But again, who knows? You hit Everyone's the nail on the head. Alone, I'm learning. The complaint I see the most is about the fans saying, some fans saying they're not getting questions, they're not getting answers. They're getting a bunch of questions, but no answers whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if you pay attention, there's little answers there that it's a bigger piece. It's a smaller piece to the bigger puzzle. Totally. Yeah. It's all about paying attention, too, to the little things as well. Uh, you're not going to get everything all at once. Um, for me, it's interesting that Christy was the first character from the original group to have someone from their past end up in town. Yeah. Um, but the Christy that we have in town now is probably not the same Christy that was, was uh, you know, in, in her previous life. Do you feel that's going to have an effect on a relationship with Mari as this series continues because it's a different person now? Oh, I mean, that's so interesting. I think we're going to learn about who who Christy was before she got here through the lens of Marielle. And I think Marielle's arrival is this mirror to Christy uh, to hold up to, to, to recognize how much she's changed, what has remained, how she's transformed. And we haven't really got a chance to unpack that in season two because there's just so much going on like this. Christy has not had a single moment of herself to sit and do any type of deep reflective work. Nobody in this town has. She's just kind of run one crisis after the next being pulled in so many different directions. I'm tired for her watching. <laughs> so, I'm like, girl, you need to sit. But again, no time in front town. She's got a lot of responsibility. So, yeah, I'm deeply curious to see how if, if there's a season, if if and when there's a season three, um, they start to unpack that and we start to learn about uh, who she, who she was prior to her arrival and how that's affected her, how much she's changed. Because of course, you you end up in a nightmare like that. You're you have to adapt and therefore you have to change. So absolutely, I'm curious yeah. too to see how that all sits with her as well. So to answer your question, yes, <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. In the first season and obviously in the season, the second season, the fans love the dynamic between Kenny and Christy. And by the time they see this interview, you know, Kenny has told Christy that he's in love with her. Um, yeah. Which was very sad to watch. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, 
how difficult is it for Chrissy to try and keep this friendship with Kenny, but at the same time work on a relationship with with Mari as well? Yeah, I think there's been no, there's been zero time for her to work on any of it. Uh, it's been essentially one medical crisis after another uh, with each episode, which doesn't really give a lot of time for Christy to sit down and have mature, rational conversations with either of them. She's just kind of trying to survive right now and do the best she can without hurting anyone. But as a result of uh, her saving lives, there's definitely some emotional damage that those types of actions and not having those types of conversations are going to have on both Mary and Christy, I mean, and Mary and, and Kenny, but it's interesting. I mean, even in season one, that relationship never came to a fruition. It right. the season ended with Christy saying, I don't know what to do. And it's interesting because I think audience members are latching on to some sort of project projection that they have maybe from their own life of that happening and kind of turning it, it's turning it into a way to relate to these characters right but in christy's eyes that she hasn't made a, a, a de- there's no decision to make she busy um <laughs> she busy she's a busy girl <laughs> she she busy especially episode seven mariel's withdrawal there's a lot there's a, there's so much guilt she's navigating too around around mariel's current state and and thinking that she wished her here and yeah also navigating uh, understanding all of the deep, 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 deep disluck that our Kenny boy has had in season one and season two and and trying to be there for him, but simply not being able to because she's caught up in a lot of other really important things as well. And yeah, it's interesting. I mean, Amiriel got introduced in such a in such a way that was so tense off of the top. Right, right. Uh, and there's already so much friction that I don't think it gave, we haven't had a chance to really sit into who these people are as a as a couple. And I think neither has Christy or Mario. They, they're still trying to find their way. And it's it's super, to me, it's, it's super real and uh, a reflection of, of how that would actually go in, in reality. And yeah, again, I think it'll be really interesting to see how these relationships shift over the course of the show and how having someone from your past forces you to reflect on who you are now and how much you've changed and it's a lot (laughs) it's a lot it is (laughs) it's interesting i've seen some (laughs) interviews with you um that you've recently done and i've seen some people talk about this what they call this this dynamic with the three these three characters uh, a love triangle and i think that kind of diminishes what's going on yeah. between these three characters. Would you agree with that? Totally. I shut it down when people call it a love triangle. I was like, I don't like that shape. It's not, yeah. let's not put a shape to this. That's not what this is. This is three people who mean something to one another, trying to figure out what, who they are, what they are in this nightmare. You know what I mean? And they're all different mirrors for each other and all projections of one another. And that's human beings, right? So I think, that dynamic on the show uh, offers the audience a lens into uh, who who are you? How how do you change when you're when you're met with such uh, insane expectation of what it takes in order to survive? How resilient are we? It's it's so much deeper than than trying to escape. That 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 dynamic has a has a deeper purpose than than the some of the lore of the plot and the mythology you know what I mean of course those things are important too but I think the human component is really really shines with 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 those three trying to figure out who they are man (laughs) yeah although it's only been like a season and, and, and a half or a little bit more than a half of the second season I've really enjoyed the growth of this character, Christy, and what you've done with this character. Mm-hmm. She's really mm-hmm. starting to come into her own, especially in the second season, especially in episode six and seven. Um, yeah. How have you enjoyed that growth in the character and 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 have you enjoyed playing that character and, and that getting that growth? 
yeah i mean it's, i've never played a character for this long before so i feel like she's wow. growing along with me and i'm learning about her while playing well as time goes on and i think as much as you bring yourself to these characters they have your they breathe the same air as you they have the same heartbeat like they start to make their own decisions and i think as an actor you start to kind of just become their parent parent them in a way make sure they don't veer too off uh but support them into the thing that they want to become and that's i mean that's why i love acting too it's just like kind of weird sorcery in a way magical thing that starts to happen when you just let a character take on a life and yeah i think i've learned so much about myself playing her and season two i really got to explore so much more of her humanity her flaws what makes her tick uh, her her deep suppression of, of so much trauma starts to really bubble to the surface. Um, and yeah, I got to learn about some of my own triggers as well by playing her. So yeah, it's been a really cool journey. Also, I work as a nurse in the real world. Uh, so being able to bring so much of that uh, to her was really special. And I've never been able to do anything like that before on such a big scale so yeah I, I'm excited to keep learning more <laughs> about her just, and myself just like when I lost um when I watched lost um like like now with from I have a notebook where I take notes when I watch episodes yeah, and one, of the cool. things I said, one of the things I constantly write in my notebook is who is taking care of of Christy. I mean, Christy takes care of everyone. Yeah. Everyone goes to Christy. Christy's there for everyone, for a shoulder to cry on. But who takes care of Christy when Christy needs someone? Yeah, I think uh, we're learning. I mean, I think episode seven offered a really kind of beautiful moment between Kenny and uh, Christy that solidified that even in the most trying times, um, they're still able to be there for each other in a way. And I think Marielle also offered support in the way that she knew how when Christy came home crumbling after having to euthanize somebody you know so it's there she she has people but she is used to holding it holding her own and it's it's very rare that we see her completely fall apart so when she does it's it's usually for very legitimate reasons <laughs> One of the reasons I love watching shows like this is there's a scene in episode seven where you're doing the autopsy on on Smiley yeah. and um, <laughs> you're getting frustrated and you're hammering yeah. with the scissors and all of a sudden this bile starts coming out and you're like crying because you're so upset. <laughs> and then Boyd's yeah. like, hey, 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 hey. Oh, yeah. And then you start laughing while you're crying and I'm like, oh, such a fantastic scene, man, between the three of you. Can you talk about that scene oh, a little bit and working on that scene? Yeah. Oh, Daddy Boyd. Um, and he's such a he's such a dad move that he did there. It was amazing. Yeah, that scene was so interesting because I I had no idea how it was gonna go. You can't plan for that, but I knew that there was a, a I needed to reach a point of momentous rage in order to justify uh, hacking at a lifeless nightmare creature. And for me to do that, Christie's logic brain had to be totally kind of completely turned off. And I think the way that that episode was arced with the writers was they did a nice job of kind of justifying that type of anger uh and frustration um at the start of episode seven but yeah i think it was just it was such a buildup of of christy's frustration of not being able to find an answer her guilt around marielle her worry for marielle her love for marielle the fact that she's down here with this creature and can't find an answer while her while her love is upstairs withering away in withdrawal and then her her confusion with with Kenny and needing him there and, and they're fighting and it's just everything everywhere all at once and she pops off and yeah again I had I didn't know how it was going to go but I mean working with Ricky and working with Harold are they're, they're incredible so present so down for whatever the laughter wasn't written in. None of that was written in. It was all just happening in real time. No, there really, was no laughter written in. No. Wow, no. that was so fluid. That seems so. Oh, wow, that's incredible. It was fluid because it was happening in real time. There's no planning. It was just like Daddy Boy settling 
Christy. And uh, it made me laugh. And and then Ricky's just there too, just trying to settle it as well. And it was just, yeah, it was really beautiful and organic. And uh, I love when scenes like that play out in an unexpected way. It's just so much rage. And then we're laughing. That's so human. How many times has that has, like, that's happened to me before? I'm just like, in a fit and then the next thing I'm like laugh crying and I'm like what is the world wow I'm alive this is nice <laughs> yeah wow um, <laughs> one of the questions I'm sorry go ahead no no go ahead one of the questions the fans had been asking since season one and now they got an answer is can anyone get pregnant in this town and now we find out that uh, I was pregnant um, yeah which is great news but at the same time, do you think Christy's wondering what the hell is going to happen with this pregnancy? Because we're... Oh, yeah. She's like, oh, really? <laughs> we're going <laughs> to add this to the play? Yeah, I definitely think at the back of her head, she's like absolutely terrified for whatever the heck is going to... How that's going to end. Yeah, we don't know. Because she doesn't know. I don't. She definitely is aware that this is not going to be some run-of-the-mill pregnancy. Right. Uh, and it's interesting because Marielle's a pediatric nurse, so I'm curious to see if there's going to be some sort of, I don't know, transfer of care <laughs> over to Marielle. The, the thing that ran in my mind, and I don't know if you remember this series back in the day, there was a series called V that was on the air, and there was this big scene about this pregnancy where this woman made it with uh, an alien, and she ended up having yeah. an alien baby, and everyone freaked out. And that's what I was thinking about when I'm thinking about this pregnancy. <laughs> yeah. Chrissy's definitely considering that as well. Yeah. I mean, I think I'll be shocked if it's just, if it comes out a baby, like mm -hmm. a human baby. I don't know. Yeah. Some, something's got to, something's got to be freaky about it. I, I know we touched on this a little bit ago, but I think we should reiterate the fact that the fans need to, to let this show play out. Enjoy what's going yeah. on with the series. Pay attention. And you will be rewarded eventually because yeah. I, you know, you just constantly hear this. Where are the answers to the questions? Where are the answers to the questions? Just more questions. Just more questions. What's going to happen? Yeah. When is it going to pay off? I'm just like chill, y'all. Enjoy the ride and get to know the characters a bit more. You'll get some answers. Patience, patience. It's nice. Patience. Is <laughs> I know it's hard, everybody. I know it's so hard, but you're going to be okay. You're going, to, you're going to be grateful for it at the end. And my final question for you, and I don't know what you can say, is um, what can fans look forward to with the remaining, uh, what, three episodes left in the season? Oh, man. Nine and ten are so wild. I mean, it goes to a place that you will not expect. Like, it really, really takes a turn uh nine and ten and and i think the fans are really going to start to worry who's going to live and who's gonna who's gonna die because it's so really? unclear yeah have you seen them not yet no. no no it gets freaky i just i ha i've just saw bits of nine recently and i was like oh my god i'm nervous i'm nervous and i know what happened Wow. Oh, speaking of which, real quick, um, there was a report maybe like a couple of months ago that mm -hmm. the series had already been greenlit for a third season and they were going to start production in July. Do you know anything about this rumor at all? I don't know if you can say or no, say No, I know someone someone posted. I saw that too on the internet and I was like, this is this is this is fake news. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, we haven't. Nothing's been official yet. I mean, there definitely are talks about a third season and. The more people watch and get excited, the more likely it'll happen. But yeah, there's a lot going on right now. There's a writer's strike that needs to have that rightfully so. And uh, I think we just need to let all of that pan out uh, before we can start chatting about season three.